Hi, today we're going to read Proverbs 31, Numbers 4, and John 3. Proverbs 31, the words of King Lemuel and the woman who fears the Lord. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him, and an oracle again is wise or authoritative decisions or opinions, right? So this is an oracle that his mother taught him. What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. And needy. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers stashes to the, sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the times to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her work praise her in the gates. Numbers 4. Duties of the Kohathites, Gershonites, and Merarites. You know, we've been reading about um, Kohath, Gershon, Merari, you know, all the different duties of the different groups and things that they had to do. So these are the duties of their people. So the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Take a census of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, by their clans and their fathers' houses, from thirty years old up to fifty years old, all who can come to, on duty to do the work in the tent of meeting. This is the service of the sons of Kohath in the tent of meeting, the most holy things. When the camp is to set out, Aaron and his sons shall go in and take down the veil of the screen and cover the ark of testimony with it. Then they shall put on it a covering of a goat skin and spread on top of that a cloth of blue and shall put in its poles. And over the table of the bread of the presence, they shall spread a cloth of blue and put it on the plates, the dishes of incense, the bowls, and the flagons for the drink offering. The regular show bread also shall be on it. Then they shall spread over them a cloth of scarlet and cover the same with a covering of goat skin and shall put in its poles. And they shall take a cloth of blue and cover the lampstand for the light with its lamps, its tongs, its trays, and all the vessels for oil with which it is supplied. And they shall put, put it with all its utensils in a covering of goatskin and put it on the carrying frame. And over the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue and cover it with a covering of goatskin and shall put in its poles. And the poles um, is what they, you know, they like slid poles through so they could carry it is what the poles are. So they're supposed to cover it and put the poles on so they can carry it to go wherever they're going to go. And they shall take all the vessels of the service that are used in the sanctuary and put them in a cloth of blue and cover them with a covering of goat skin and put them on the carrying frame. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth over it. And they shall put on it all the utensils of the altar which are used for the service. There for the service there, the fire pans, the forks, the shovels, and the basins, all the utensils of the altar, and they shall spread on it a covering of goat skin, and shall put in its poles. And when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sanctuary and all the furnishings of the sanctuary as the camp sets out, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to carry these, but they must not touch the holy things lest they die. These are the things of the tent of meeting that the sons of Kohath are to carry. 
And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, shall have charge of the oil for the light, the fragrant incense, the regular grain offering, and the anointing oil, with the oversight of the whole tabernacle and all that is in it of the sanctuary and its vessels. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Let not the tribe of the clans of the Kohathites be destroyed from among the Levites, but deal thus with them, that they may live and not die when they come near to the most holy things. Aaron and his sons shall go in and appoint them, each to his task and to his burden, but they shall not go in to look on the holy things, even for a moment, lest they die. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take a census of the sons of Gershon also, by their fathers' houses and by their clans. From thirty years old up to fifty years old, you shall list them, all who can come to do duty, to do service in the tent of meeting. This is the service of the clans of the Gershonites, in serving and bearing burdens. They shall carry the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tent of meeting with its coverings, and the covering of goat skin that is on top of it, and the screen for the entrance of the tent of meeting, and the hangings of the court, and the screen for the entrance of the gate of the court that is around the tabernacle, and the altar, and their cords, and all the equipment for their service. And they shall do all that needs to be done with regard to them. All the service of the sons of Gershonites shall be at the command of Aaron and his sons, and all that they are to carry, and in all that they have to do, and you shall assign to their charge all that they are to carry. This is the service of the clans of the sons of the Gershonites in the tent of meeting, and their guard duty is to be under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. As for the sons of Merari, you shall list them by their clans and their fathers' houses. From thirty years old up to fifty years old you shall list them, everyone who can come on duty to do the service of the tent of meeting. And this is what they are charged to carry. As the whole of their service in the tent of meeting, the frames of the tabernacle with its bars, pillars, and bases, and the pillars around the court with their bases, pegs, and cords, with all their equipment and all their accessories, and you shall list by name the objects that they are required to carry. This is the service of the clans of the sons of Merari, the whole of their service in the tent of meeting, under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. And Moses and Aaron and the chiefs of the congregation listed the sons of the Kohathites by their clans and their fathers' houses, from thirty years old up to fifty years old, everyone who could come on duty for service in the tent of meeting. And those listed by clans were two thousand seven hundred and fifty. This was the list of the clans of Kohathites, all who served in the tent of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron listed according to the commandment of the Lord by Moses. Those listed of the sons of Gershon by their clans and their fathers' houses from 30 years old up to 50 years old, everyone who could come on duty for service of the tent of meeting, those listed by their clans and their fathers' houses were 2,630. This was the list of clans of the sons of Gershon, who all, who all who served in the tent of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron listed according to the commandment of the Lord. Those listed of the clans of sons by Merari, by their clans and their fathers' houses from 30 years old up to 50 years old, everyone who could come on duty for service in the tent of meeting, those, cl those listed by clans were 3,200. This was a list of clans of the son of Merari, whom Moses and Aaron listed according to the commandment of the Lord by Moses. All those who were listed of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the chiefs of Israel listed by their clans and their fathers' houses, from 30 years old up to 50 years old, everyone who could come to do the service of ministry and the service of bearing burdens in the tent of meeting, those listed were 8,580. According to the commandment of the Lord through Moses, they were listed, each one with his task or of service, serving or carrying. Thus they were listed by him as the Lord commanded Moses. John 3. You must be born again, for God so loved the world, and John the Baptist exalts Christ. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, just as a side note, when you hear truly, truly, that means it's pretty important what you're about to read, so you should really pay attention. So he's saying that, you know, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said this to you. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. 
And Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. He's talking about himself, the Son of Man. So he's saying the Son of Man is going to be lifted up, you know, crucified, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. Jesus came into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. And John also was baptizing with Anon at Anon near Salem because water was plentiful there and people were coming and being baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification, and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing and all are going to him. And John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you can continue to join in on the daily Bible study. Like and share with everyone else so they can join in too. You never know who needs encouragement. Don't forget that Jesus loves you, and I pray you have a blessed day.